All right. Hello, friends. Good morning. If it's morning when you're watching this video, if you're watching it for the first time, that means that you are currently in an MS-378, and this is test day. And as I like to do on test day, I, I try to record a last-minute video of some tutorials that sometimes do just struggle with or just forget a little bit about because it's been a while since we've touched on it. So what I wanted to take a look at today was loan amortization, but loan, loan amortization with additional details of cumulative interest and running cumulative principle. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm a little choked up this morning. So let's take a look at our business scenario here. So let's say that you want to go out and purchase yourself a vehicle, a car of some sort, and you know that your budget is $625. That's your budget. You know that the going interest rate for cars would be four and a quarter. So these are things we can't really control. Our budget is going to be static, right? So $625 is what we can afford, and the interest rate is going to be 4.25% over six years with you making monthly payments. So the first challenge you'll run into with this is you actually don't know how much car you can buy, right? You know what your monthly budget is. You know what the interest rate is. You know what the terms of the loan would be. But you actually don't know what the starting amount would be, right? So when you go to the dealership and they go, well, how much do you want to spend? You actually don't know what that is. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to jump in here and we're going to use the present value function to figure out what the present value of this loan would be. Right, so if this loan is over a six year span at four and a quarter, we could figure out the future value, right? But we could also use present value to figure out what that would be worth today, right? What the future value of that loan would be worth today. So we're gonna start with that. So we'll jump in here. We'll take that annual interest rate. We'll divide it by 12, okay? We're gonna take the uh, six years and we're going to multiply that six years by 12, right? because uh, NPER is obviously the total number of periods. And then the last thing is the periodic payment amount. The periodic payment amount is a negative number, and it's gonna be $625. And that tells us that our loan is $39,659, okay? So if you go to the car dealership, this is your max budget. That's, you can't go any higher than that, or you'll have a payment that's higher than 6.25, or you'd have to change one of the other inputs. You'd have to get a lower interest rate, or you'd have to change the number of years that you finance. So the next thing we need to do is figure out our periodic interest rate. That's pretty easy. We're going to take our four and a quarter. We're going to divide that by 12. There's your periodic interest rate. Our total number of periods is also very easy. So it's six years at 12 payments a year. Boom, 72 total payments. So our real goal for the day, which won't take us too much time, is to fill out this whole amortization table. But we also want to fill out this additional cumulative interest and cumulative principle, and I'll call it cum interest and cum principle uh, columns, okay? So the first thing we need is our payment numbers. So we need our payment numbers one through 72 going down column A. So the easiest way to do that is to do fill series, and we're gonna fill the column, whoops, fill series. We're gonna fill the column in increments of one stopping at the value of 72. Boom. Easy, right? How easy is that? So the next thing we need is our beginning balance of the first payment, right? Beginning balance of payment number one. The beginning balance of payment number one is going to be that 39,659. And that's really all we can do here because the beginning balance of payment number two is the ending balance of payment number one. So that's all we need to do is just reference that 39,000. Next thing we're going to do is plug in our monthly payment. So our monthly payment is a static number. You're never going to pay anything less than this. You could pay extra, but you'd never pay less. So we're going to plug in that 625. We're just going to reference that. But since that's a constant, we're going to absolute value that and keep that as it is. So then there's the interest paid. So this is a fun point here. You know from business calculus and you know from MS100, there's actually two different ways that you can calculate interest. The interest on this payment is the periodic interest rate multiplied by the amount that you owe at the beginning of the payment. And that would tell you your total interest, right? So I could do that this way. I could go uh, periodic interest rate multiplied by the amount that I owe, which is 39,659. Now keep in mind that that 39,659 is what you owe at the beginning of the first payment. And at the beginning of the second payment, it would be a different number because remember, it's the periodic interest rate 
multiplied by the amount that you owe at the beginning of the payment, right? So at the end of the first payment, you will have paid some of this loan down. Therefore, uh, you'll owe less interest on the next payment. So notice that that number was 140, uh, 140.46. Okay, that's one way to do it. But there's another way to do this, and that's using the IPMT function, IPMT. Now you already know how the IPMT function works, and I'm gonna go ahead and use it here only because it's kind of a lead in to the QM IPMT and QM PPMT functions we're gonna use in a minute. So the IPMT function will tell you what the interest only of the first payment would be, and the interest only of the second payment, and the interest only of the third payment, right? So basically it's gonna take the periodic interest rate multiplied by the amount that you owe per payment, okay? Now, yes, you can do the math yourself, which is what I just showed you. However, the benefit of the IPMT function is that it gives you the ability to specify the specific period that you want to analyze. So the first argument is rate. You know that that's always periodic interest rate. That's going to be an absolute. Here's the benefit. Notice that here, the second argument is PER. That, that PER stands for period of analysis, basically. So what payment number, okay, what payment number do you want to know the interest of? So if I didn't have the ability to specify, right, so I could go in and type in, I want to know the interest of the 72nd payment. That's the cool part of IPMT. So if I didn't do this, if I didn't use IPMT and I wanted to know the answer to the, the amount of interest for the 72nd payment, I would literally have to fill out this entire worksheet and then look at the interest column at the end of this in like cell D79. Okay, so that's sort of the benefit of it. Um, on the test, honestly, I don't really care what you use. You can use either one. Um, remember, we're not testing the functions like we used to. So you're welcome to use whatever mathematical formula you would like. You can either use the function or the formula. They'll, they'll both come out to be the same. Okay, so if I'm using the function, though, I'm going to reference cell A1, and I'm not going to make it absolute because when I fill it down, I want it to be 2, then 3, then 4, then 5 payment number wise. So in PER for the IPMT function stands for total number of periods. We figured that out earlier, right? So it's boom, 72 total payments, which we're also gonna make absolute. There we go. Now we're almost done here. The IPMT argument uh, that you need next is PV. PV is present value. It is the starting amount of the loan. <coughs> Pardon me, okay? So we know that's gonna be a negative value, and we're gonna say that the starting amount of the loan is 39,659. By the way, why is that a negative value? Easy way to think of it is Excel knows accounting. That's the amount that you are borrowing at the beginning of this loan. And look at that, you get that same number, 140.46. So now, you know there's a function called PPMT, and PPMT will do the same thing that IPMT does. However, we don't really need to use PPMT here. And note that, look at that, the arguments are exactly the same. So they work exactly the same. The only difference is the PPMT function is going to tell you what the principal amount of that payment would be instead of the interest, okay? But there's a faster way to do this because we already did IPMT. So all we need to do is take the monthly payment of 625, subtract the interest, right? Because the bank takes their cut off the top, and it's gonna tell you what the principal for that payment is. Easy enough. So the last thing we need to do is we'll take our beginning balance and we will subtract our principal from it, boop, like so, and we get the ending balance of the first payment. Now here comes the easy part with amortization, okay? The beginning balance of the second payment is the ending balance of the first payment. So we can just do that. Ooh, I really need a mouse this morning. And we can fill that down. The monthly payment never changes. It can You could always pay more, but you could never pay less than 625. We worked our interest in a way that we should be able to fill this down, but I notice, ooh, look at that, shame on me. I didn't absolute value the present value of IPMT, which I need to do. So I'm going to do that and fill that down. I can fill down my principal payment, fill down my beginning balance, and I know this is right if I skip to the bottom and let's go ahead and jump down. Boop, look at that. On the 72nd payment, I owe $622.79 at the beginning. I'm going to pay a check of $625. That's my static payment. Of, of that check, $2.21 is interest. The rest is principal, leaving me with a balance of zero. Perfect. So now comes the new part. 
Okay, and we've looked at this before, but I, don't, I actually didn't think I have a video on it, so it seemed like a good idea to do one on cum interest and cum principal. So there's another function that you can write, which is really, really nifty, and it's called cumulative interest, cumulative principal. Here's what they do. Think of them like total running value. So the cumulative interest function, which is cum IPMT, okay, will tell you what the interest is, but it's going to tell you the running interest. So it's going to tell you the total amount of interest you've paid up to date of whatever payment you're talking about. So for example, the total cumulative interest for payment one would be 140.46, but the total cumulative interest for payment two would be 140.46 plus 138.74, right? Because you've paid two months of interest. Then it would be three months of interest. Then it would be four months of interest. So the cum IP and T function, gonna add all those up for you. So it gives you a running total, okay? Which is pretty nifty. So it's fairly simple to do, but there are a few things that are slightly different because it deals with time series, right? So the first payment compared to the second payment and the first payment compared to the third payment, first payment compared to the fourth. So let's just take a look at it and we'll see how it works. So the first argument is really easy, right? Because anytime you see the word rate in a financial function in Excel, you know that that's always the periodic interest rate. So we're gonna take that periodic interest rate and we will simply absolute value that. That's the easy one. So the next thing is the total number of periods, right? N-P-E-R, total number of periods. So you already figured that out too. It's 72 total payments is what you're making. We will absolute value that as well. All right. So then we've got the present value. So now you can put the present value in a couple ways. I'm going to go ahead and put it in as a positive number and we'll see what that does for you. Okay. But if we put it in as a negative, we'll see what that does too in a minute. But first, let's just put it in as a positive. So we'll just go ahead and plug in that 39,000. And we also want to make that absolute, right? Because the present value is the starting value of the loan, and that starting value never changes. Here's where it gets intriguing, though. Okay. So when you do the QM IPMT and QM PPMT functions, you have to give it a starting period and an ending period. Okay, to analyze your values. So the thing that's interesting is that your starting period, if you're running a total, a total run value, is going to be your first payment, right? So the starting period would be payment one. So I'm going over here and I'm going to reference payment one. Now because that's never going to change, I actually need to absolute value that because we're always comparing it if we're keeping a total run, right? So we've started off with payment one. But then what's different is for our end period, we're going to do payment one as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we're not going to absolute value that. Okay. So we absolute value the starting period. So we always compare it to one, but we're not absolute valuing the ending period. So when we fill it down, it'll be one column one compared to two, column one compared to three, payment one compared to four, moving down. Now, the one thing that you have to do, which is slightly different, is you have to put in the type at the end of the QM IPMT and QM PPMT functions, you have to put it in. With other financial functions, you can just leave it blank, but with this, you really have to put it in or it yells at you. So we're just gonna go ahead and go with zero. And look at that, we get 140.46. Now notice that that's a negative value. It's a negative value because we put the present value in as a positive. If you want it to appear as a negative, that's up to you. If you need that to happen, you're gonna jump in and put that negative in front of that present value argument. And then, oh, what a hold on. Let us take that out of there. Let's try to put that somewhere else. There we go. We'll put that in front of the QM IPMT function. That is one of those quirky things about the QM IPMT function. It doesn't like that negative present value here. So we're going to go ahead and plug that. If you want it to be positive, put that negative value in front of the argument. Okay. Or excuse me, not in front of the argument, in front of the function and it will give you that as a positive number. We actually want it to be a negative, so we're just gonna go ahead and remove this, and there we have it. So here's what's cool, right? So if I fill this down, it's gonna tell me 279.20 for my second QM run. So that's because it's taking the 140 and the 138, see down here, 279.20, and it's adding it up. So basically, it's giving you a total run of all of the interest you're gonna pay, all the way down, boom, to the last payment. So uh, your total amount of interest you've paid on this loan is 5,341. That's the total amount of interest on the loan. So then you have the brother of the QM IPMT function, which is the QM Prince function, right? So the QM Prince function stands for QM Principal. 
Okay, and it does the same thing that QM IP and T does. It's just telling you the principal instead of the interest, which you should know by common sense. The very last payment then would be the total balance of the loan, right? The three thousand uh, thirty-nine thousand six fifty-nine. So let's go ahead and plug this in and take this home because it's going to take me a minute to upload it after it's done, and you guys are probably cramming right now. So I'm going to go ahead and take the interest rate, right? The periodic rate. It's the same as QM IP and T. We're going to make that absolute. I'm going to take the total number of periods, boom, which is 72. We're going to make that absolute. We're going to take the present value, which is 39,659. We're going to make that absolute. Then we're going to take our starting period of period one, which we also want to make absolute. But our ending period, we're going to plug in is A8, not absolute. And last but not least, we're going to put in a type of zero. And we get 484.54 here, right? That's your first payment. And as I fill this down, it's gonna keep a total running payment. So it's adding these two together, then it's adding these three together, then it's adding these four together, adding these five together. And at the end, 39,659, right? That's what you paid back. So there you have it, my friends. QM prints and QM IPMT. I wish you good luck, my friends, on the test today. I will see you in a couple hours. If you were tuning in, one of the few people that actually watched these for enjoyment, thank you. I promise I will make more videos. It's been a little while since I've dropped some. So uh, for now, that's it. Have a good, great day, and we'll talk to you soon.